Hello, folks. Welcome to Cudlow. I'm Larry Cudlow. There they go again. Joe Biden and company out there on the campaign trail telling us how wonderful their economic policies have been. Wait a minute. Scrap the word wonderful. Insert successful. Fabulously successful economic policies. The problem is, in barely more than a year, Bidenomics has taken a non-inflationary boom and turned it into a high inflation bust. And frankly, with no relief in sight, at least until the cavalry comes and we change congressional policies this November. Now, I'm delighted to see my dear friends on the Wall Street Journal editorial board take Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen to task. She is leading the Biden economic victory tour, but unfortunately, she has supported all of the progressive big government socialist policies coming from the far left of the Democratic Party. These are themes that I've talked about for months and months. She believes, for example, that the $2 trillion stimulus package of March 2021 was necessary to boost the economy. Trouble is the economy was already in a V-shaped recovery coming out of the pandemic, undergirded by President Trump's policies of low taxes, deregulation, and open fossil fuel spigots. Ms. Yellen, who is an accomplished economist and a former Fed chair and married to a distinguished economic noblest, is speaking, however, with forked tongue. Her analysis is false. It is dead wrong. What's more, she was leading the charge, along with Jay Powell and Joe Biden, that inflationary pressures from extravagant government spending, massive government borrowing, and exuberant Fed money printing, all homegrown policies before Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine, an 8% inflation rate were caused by these huge fiscal mistakes. That is why Ms. Yellen's reputation is plunging. Personally, I don't like to see this, but professionally, I have to talk about it. And as the Wall Street Journal points out, and I've said it dozens of times on this show over the past year, the Trump tax cuts increased real wages for blue collar working folks and for minorities. Unemployment rates for those same groups plunged to 50 year lows. Poverty declined, inequality declined. In fact, the biggest winners from the personal and business tax cuts were middle and lower income folks, not the top earners. And these are facts. Ms. Yellen speaking in Detroit argues that Trump's tax cuts cause higher inequality and slower growth. She is factually wrong, and she knows it. And by the by, with Mr. Biden's 8% inflation rate, real worker wages have actually fallen about 3.5% over the past year under Mr. Biden's policies. Now, the first bullet in this new White House economic blueprint fact sheet says, workers have been in power, empowered. Whoops. Forgot about falling real wages and falling real family incomes. Then they talk about making and building in America. But wait a second, you can't get a permit to make or build anything in Biden's America. His zealous environmental rules have stopped almost everything, all manner of energy. And by the by, even ordinary road building infrastructure too, can't get it past the fanatics in the White House and the EPA. Rewarding work, they say, not wealth? Well, yeah. Every model, however, shows that the government's private sector calculations, recent legislation will heavily tax the middle class and the IRS will spend its time unloading on the middle class. And virtually no one in the entire American population believes the Inflation Reduction Bill will reduce inflation. Virtually no one. And I'll conclude with this thought. This radical global warming climate change obsession that informs every single policy of the Biden administration is moving the U.S. and the rest of the world toward an unstoppable economic decline. Hat tip to The Wall Street Journal's Joseph C. Sternberg for his excellent column, The Coming Global Crisis of Climate Policy. Now, there is no climate emergency. There never was. It's all a central planning, socialist fabrication. 
trying to jam this bureaucratic religion down our throats. Fossil fuels still generate about 85% of the world's power, despite spending billions and trillions of dollars, even after decades of government subsidies and crazy quilted regulatory plans. But what will happen if any of these climate policies for net zero this or net zero that or we're going to take your car away from you or we're not going to let you run your air conditioning or literally these crazy policies just want to unplug America. If any of this stuff ever really comes to pass, it will be a global economic and financial catastrophe. But folks, as always, I want you to go home with an optimistic frame of mind heading into the weekend. Why? Well, because the cavalry's coming. I believe that. And that is my riff.